Welcome to our next tutorial of Quick Surface. Let's explore the next functionality which is called Construct Primitives. Before I begin, I will just go and use our Extract Primitives tools. We will just select this bottom, create a plane, and create it in Quick Surface. I will just quickly just take this cylinder, we'll fit the cylinder, and then I press Create. Now we have these primitives and how we can edit them. The first and the easiest way of doing this is you just click on the screen on the primitive and then you have handles. For example, for this cylinder we can just change the length of the cylinder and how we do this you just hold your mouse over the arrows and then you drag on the screen. For example, here I can extend uh, the plane and make it much bigger. Also for the plane, there are additional two controls. One is just to rotate the plane if you need to. And the other option is you can just track in parallel of how it is defined. But you can also edit and construct new primitives by selecting the construct menu. I'll just go construct and try to create another plane. As you can see by default it created the plane just at the bottom. You can just choose in which standard plane you can start with and set your plane the way you need it. Another option is that what you can do is to create from another plane. In some cases I will just hide this cylinder, as you can see, we may want to create a plane which is parallel to our uh, starting plane, and for this reason I will select the option from another plane and will pick my reference plane. By default it's the same as the other one, and I can just start dragging. As you can see, the dragging just offsets this plane in space. You can also have a numeric value here to to adjust this distance, for example, I can type in 150 millimeters, and then this place plane will be positioned here. Also, we can play with the orientation of this plane. I can just tilt it at 45 degrees, as you can see, and then I can just track and ensure that it is at 45 degrees to my initial plane. Now the option that I can do is rotate it in the other direction, for example 15 degrees, and I can apply. So as you can see now, we have the flexibility to construct our plane in a different way. I will just accept this and leave this on the screen. We will go and try to construct another plane, and in this case, in some examples, you may want to create a middle plane of the two planes. So for this reason we have something which is called constructed. I can just pick this, uh, my first plane, and then I need to pick my second plane. And as you can see, this is my middle plane of the two planes. You can also <coughs> create a plane which is, for example, perpendicular to my cylinder. I just pick the cylinder, and if it's arbitrary in space, now my plane will be absolutely perpendicular to this um, cylinder. So different ways to actually construct uh, the plane. Also, when you have them on the screen, you can actually go back and edit these planes. How the editing works, you can just click on the object. As you can see, it's selected. And then you can just double-click on it, and you get the same dialog where you can change the properties of this plane. Another option is you select in the object tree, right-click, and select Edit. You come up again with the same dialog. In some cases, people don't want to accidentally move the, um, the plane in space. For example, here I manually do it. But if it's a fit plane or it's um, well defined that you are happy with the position, you can lock this plane. What locking means that you can change the size, but you cannot drag it and change the position of the actual plane. This is quite useful in, in many cases. When you do transform the object, or you just uh, rotate this on the screen, if I put this into the front view or the top view, you see that the planes are not actually aligned in my view. So what I can do, I can just tell the software, please align the plane. 
to our world axis. So now it's nicely defined. For example, in this case, I will go right click and edit my plane and align to the world axis. This gives us a nicer and better orientation of the primitives. So when you're happy, you just press OK and you accept this. In a similar way, we can construct the different cylinders which you can explore. For example, here I will just hide these. I may want to construct another cylinder that it's uh, similar to this one. I'll just go and create a cylinder. In this case, I, by default, it creates a small cylinder. So what I can do, I can tell the software that I want this to be coincident with my big cylinder. And I can type in a specific radius, for example, 50, and I can press apply. As you can see now, the cylinder is kind of related to the, the other one, and it always will be coincident with my initial cylinder. As you can see, the difference between the two cylinders is that this is closed. There is an option here which says that my cylinder needs to be closed. This is useful if you want to do a Boolean operation. Let's press OK and then I accept this. I can go back to my initial cylinder, right click and select Edit. Here I can always select the option Solid to make this a solid cylinder. Then, as you learn later, you can apply Boolean operations, you can merge this and generate these um, <coughs> cylinders in a Boolean operation. In a similar way, you may find that you can actually construct cones, which is a bit limited, and you can type in some values that it's not uh, something that you need to. But if you have created this with the best fit, you can come and adjust the same angle of the um, of the cone and so on. And the last thing I want to cover in this tutorial is about the sphere. It's a very simple. You can just uh, type in where the um, center of the sphere is, or you can make it coincident with another sphere. There are not many cases where you need to do this, but it's quite useful if you have all this functionality. I hope this uh, tutorial was useful and you can start practicing and creating your planes and cylinders with the example parts that we have in our tutorial. Thank you for watching.